Revelations was the conclusion of Black Ops 3 Zombies, and the storyline as we knew it. Revelations was the grand finale. After bouncing around from Der Eisendrak to Zetsubo to Gerard Krovi extracting the souls from the characters, we finally found ourselves in Revelations. And though some holes would be filled in later in Black Ops 4's Ether story with Blood of the Dead and Classified, this was essentially the end bracket, the map that closed everything up. And while closing out this eight-year endeavor, Treyarch decided to push all of their chips to the middle. They brought back all of our favorite features from previous Zombies maps. The map revolved around nostalgia and relied so much on returning features and maps that the only two original locations on the map were Spawn and Inside the Apothecan. Every other part of the map is a revamped version of a previous Zombies map, which isn't necessarily bad. People can hop on Rev, get a quick nostalgia boner, and have a great game. In fact, the first time we all played Rev, we all just walked around reminiscing, thinking about all the times we trained in the mob cafeteria, thinking about all the times we trained in the Kino stage, admiring the temples of Shangri-La, or hell, even wall running under Eisendrag. But after those first few games, of reminiscing are up, you don't see much beyond the nostalgia. It becomes immediately clear that the entire map is one giant recycling bin, which wouldn't have been a problem had they innovated just a bit more. There simply isn't enough innovation on Revelations for it to feel like a fresh experience. Instead of pushing for one more specialist or making one different wonder weapon, introducing one new perk, they decided to recycle literally everything. Here's a list of innovations for Rev. These are the only entirely new concepts. There were the four new Gobblegum, the two new new weapons in the Banshee and the Rifty 9, and the Fury. Everything else was either a copy and paste or a slightly revamped version of something we've seen in the past. The Dragon Shield, Ragnaroks, Lil Arnie's, Apothecan Servant, Thunder Gun, Tommy Gun, Peacekeeper, all returning weapons. The Flogger returned, and the turret is a little different, but again, it was a revamp. The time challenges with the melee weapons and the masks, both from Garad Krovi. All the bosses, the Marguas, the Panzer, the Parasites, all returning. The Wonder Fizz Machine, the challenges, pretty much everything. Maybe I forgot a few things, but you get my point. The vast majority of the features on this map we'd seen before. Nothing surprised us. And again, that doesn't necessarily ruin the gameplay. You can still hop on Rev and have a great time, especially since it's one of the easiest maps and one of the most replayable maps. But for those who consider themselves above the casual level, we're upset with this map. Not only was Revelations a giant recycling bin, it was the easiest map ever made. There are far too many elements that make it overpowered and mindless. At the forefront of this, you have Double Pack-a-Punch, which plagues Black Ops 3, not just Revelations, but again, with a Double Pack-a-Punched weapon, you essentially have an infinite damage wonder weapon. You have the most powerful shield, you have one of the best specialists, and you have two of the most dominant wonder weapons ever made whose only problems are related to ammo, but again with gobble gum like alchemical antithesis, that's irrelevant. You have the god masks, which enhance you quite a bit. Little Arnies are extremely helpful, and you have way more than enough space to train in this map. Pretty much every part of the map is viable for training. I can't think of a spot on the map that you can't train effectively in. Getting to around 100 on this map really depends on whether or not you have six hours to spare. And I'm not discrediting anybody that got to round 100 or more. I actually haven't gotten around 100 or more on this map, primarily because I don't care enough to. But there is nothing that changes the fact that Rev is pretty much the easiest map ever. Getting to round 100 is still round 100. I'm not here to criticize anybody. Well, let's just keep it real. So what have I done so far? I've determined that Revelations is one giant recycling bin and is far too easy. But instead of just complaining about it, I'm going to offer some constructive criticism. I'll go over some potential changes I would have made to fix all of these problems. By adding a few things and taking a few things away to make the game relatively harder and also feel more innovative. The most glaring flaw is the arsenal of disgustingly overpowered wonder weapons, so I propose we take one of them away. I say we keep Lolarnies in the shield, those are pretty good. I say we keep the Apothecan Servant since that very much fits in with the map and the atmosphere and the story. And I say we get rid of the Thunder Gun. It sounds blasphemous, but truly, do we need a Thunder Gun on a map with an upgradable Apothecan Servant and guns with double Pack-a-Punch? Also, I propose we get rid of the Ragnaroks and replace them with a new Specialist. What that new Specialist would be, I haven't a clue. Treyarch obviously would figure something out, either transferring it for multiplayer into zombies like they do with most of them, or coming up with something cool. It doesn't have to be a process to get it, you can still get it out of the box like the Ragnaroks, but I would change that. I would also add another perk. It could be an entirely new perk, or it could be a returning one such as Vulture Aid, even Tombstone Who's Who. I don't care, honestly. Something new would be nice, though. Beyond that, I may make a few minor tweaks here and there, but I wouldn't change anything else major. And I'm sure a lot of you guys wouldn't make those changes and you disagree with me entirely, which is cool. It's all hypothetical, of course. Treyarch isn't going to make these changes. The map is three years old almost. But that'd be killing two birds with one stone. You'd be making the map slightly more difficult and also a little more innovative. And even with that slight innovation, people wouldn't care about all the returning features because it would still feel like a fresh experience. I'd be making an entirely different analysis 
analysis on Revelations had that been the case. But even though the map is extremely easy, even by Black Ops 3 standards, I would say that Rev is a very replayable map. You can hop on this map several times a week and have a great time every time. It won't feel monotonous. It's not a map like Zetsubo or Shadows where you set up for 45 minutes on solo and typically struggle to do so. The map is super laid back and the atmosphere is actually great. It doesn't fit everyone's style, but generally it's smooth. Clearly it's an outer space and there are fragmented islands of the maps that we've seen in the past. The flow of the map could have been bad, but it was surprisingly good. Transitioning from one island to another isn't too bad. Plus you can teleport, which speeds everything up. Aesthetically, it's nice. It's a generally dark map, but has its bright spots and it's also very colorful. The environment and the design of Revelations aren't too bad. And it's not like they selected a bunch of shitty maps to throw in Rev. They picked some pretty good ones, obviously fan favorites and everyone's comfortable and familiar with them. So it feels like a relatively familiar map with having a slight twist on it. Let's talk about the Easter egg. It was a disaster. Surely, after monumental Easter eggs of the like of Derizendrak, Moon, Shangri-La, Buried, you would expect Revelations to be by far the best and the most expansive Easter egg. The most climatic, especially since it was regarded as the last map in Zombies. No, all right, it was just the opposite. Blundell said this Easter egg would take several years to solve, and my God, it was solved within a week. And not only that, it was the glitchiest Easter egg to launch ever. Once you managed to finally not lag out of your game and complete the Easter egg, you were totally dissatisfied. The steps of the Easter egg feel so unnecessary, and the Easter egg is so RNG. You depend so heavily on getting box weapons and other random things. It was the final map. We were expecting a giant boss battle or something huge to happen, but this is what we got, as Lex swiftly puts it. Why offer a god mask in Revelations that takes up to 10 hits of damage when your boss fight is this fast and anticlimactic? <sighs> intense music, no challenge, and more importantly, no death. Where is the thousands of Apothecans that I was meaning to kill? Where is the mass of Apothecan legends that I was meaning to slay? Where is the true climax of zombies? The blinding fact of the matter is that Revelations, like all of Black Ops 3, put the power of nostalgia over innovation. Sure, the ending wasn't terrible. We killed the Shadow Man, Primus prevails, all that. I get it. It's a wholesome ending, but there is so much room for improvement. It could have been so much more grand. The Derizendrak boss fight is way more difficult than this one, and it really shouldn't be. They should have added emphasis to a major boss fight with easy steps to lead up to it. They shouldn't have made a bunch of random steps that rely heavily on RNG. It isn't a straightforward Easter egg, it isn't a quick Easter egg, and for me, it's not even a fun Easter egg. Nowadays, it feels like our nostalgia is used against us. It feels like nostalgia is a tool to get us to buy into something. It's video games, it's movies, it's pretty much everything. And Revelations embodies this. Revelations is nothing but pure nostalgia. It had essentially nothing that made it feel like a new experience. And like any remake or sequel or prequel or anything that uses our nostalgia against us, there is some quality there. A lot of movies nowadays are really just remakes of movies we had already seen. A perfect example of this, I guess, would be It. Of course, there's a few twists and turns here, but generally it follows the same plot. Revelations is that movie. It's that thing we've seen before. I enjoyed Revelations to a certain extent, but it never 100% clicked for me. If nothing I said makes sense, I'll put it this way. They essentially took all of my favorite meals and blended it together to make one mega meal. All of the components of those meals are still there, but as a whole, it isn't fantastic. That's what Revelations is. It took all of our favorite maps, blended them together, and gave us a big map. As a whole though, in my opinion, it isn't great. Revelations is one giant recycling bin, but it's not a trash can. Revelations objectively isn't a bad map, but has much room for improvement and could have been so much better. Even by tweaking a few things here and there, like I mentioned earlier, could have changed everything. The magic of Revelations wore off just as quickly as nostalgia can wear off. For me, it was a couple weeks. Though the map was anticlimactic, I do respect the ending. And as a conclusion, it was heartfelt. Seeing the four beloved characters enter eternal bliss as premise was something cool to see. And in the bigger picture, Revelations wrapped up Black Ops 3, which for many people were the good old days. Black Ops 3 was the end of zombies, the end of that story. Revelations was a bittersweet ending.